welcome to this week's video from a very lovely and misty morning here in Oxford. Uh, I'm currently walking to my lecture, which is on Moliere this morning, um, but I'm taking the scenic route through the gardens of Worcester College because why wouldn't you? It is absolutely stunning. And uh, this week's video is going to be on admissions tests to get into Oxford, specifically the MLAT, but hopefully ooh, some of the tips in this video can be used for other subjects as well. Um, so if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions about what I'm saying, uh, do ask in the comment section below, I will reply. And subscribe if you haven't already, because uh, it's really helpful uh, and I really appreciate it. So yeah. <laughs> Okay, so here we go. Um, try and ignore the fake tan look on my face, but the lighting in here is atrocious. Um, talking about admissions tests then, I'm essentially going to take uh, what it says on the Oxford website for the MLAT and sort of give my opinion on it, uh, give some tips in addition to that. Uh, but that is where you should go if you need any more details. So sort of registering for them, you have to do it a certain period of time, uh, which for this year has already passed. Um, so all the details, official details are on there and I will link the website in the comment section below so you can check that out. But hopefully what I have to say and my experiences from it will be really helpful. So firstly, I did my test during COVID. Um, I did it in school and it was invigilated by the school's invigilators. Uh, I went in, I did my two hours and then I went out. Um, now the MLAT is specifically for people on courses, um, with modern languages in them, so classics and modern languages, English and modern languages, modern languages by itself, modern languages and linguistics or philosophy, whatever. Um, so everyone needs to do it. And there are usually two parts to it. Um, so if you're doing two languages, you'll do the French part and the Spanish part, if you're doing French and Spanish, or whichever combination there is. Um, there's also the fact that if you're just doing one language, you'll only have to do your language, I'm fairly sure. And if you're learning a language from scratch, uh, you may have to do the section to check your language aptitude. This is just um, to check theoretically, obviously, how good you are at learning a language. Um, now, the content of the exams is very tough. It's essentially the most obscure and tricky grammar sentences you have to translate you've ever seen. Um, it's essentially the things that we do at the end of first year in our prelim exams. So it's a end of first year level test, basically. And there is no need to worry about it. Um, they're not expecting you to get everything right because it is so hard. And all they want to see is you trying to work around the difficulties and coming up with a solution. Um, and this is valid for all admissions tests in Oxford. Fairly sure that they're all really tricky and you just need to use use your knowledge um, to come up with solutions. Um, I found them really, really hard and I still managed to get in. I don't think I did well in them, but I'm here. So there we go. And this leads me on to my next point, um, which is that it's really important to remember that these admissions tests are only one part of the entire admissions process. So in the admissions process, you've got your personal statement, you've got your predicted grades, you've got any work you need to hand in for it, you've got these admissions tests and you've got an interviews. So there's a huge pathway to receiving an offer from Oxford and it's really important to remember that the admissions test is just one part of that. So if you don't do really well, it's not the end of the world because the university have three or four other sort of places they can take information from. Um, before offering you a place. So I think it's really important to sort of remember and keep things realistic. This is not the be all and end all. It definitely helps if you do well in it. But as I just said, it's so hard and they don't expect you to do well in them because it's, it's at such a high level. So now I just have a list of simple top tips that I used to uh, practice for my MLAT. Um, and one of the obvious things is to just practice one. So there are plenty of past papers on the website and download them, print them off or do them on the computer. Just do one and see what you come out with. Uh, some of them have answers. So do one with answers, see what you come out with, 
what sort of mark you get, where you go wrong and use that. So if you really struggled with the subjunctive in Spanish or you really struggled with quantum chemistry, if you're doing chemistry, I don't really know. Um, I actually don't think chemistry have admissions test. But let's say you're finding a part of physics really hard and you don't do well on it. Use that as your focus. So before you do another practice one, sort of relearn, reteach yourself the part you found tricky. So I did find the subjunctive in Spanish extremely hard after my first one. It was awful. I felt so disillusioned when I got when I marked my test and realized that the Spanish was really not good. Um, so I went away and I sort of relearned the Spanish grammar and, well, not the whole of the Spanish grammar. <laughs> that would be really impossible. I relearned the Spanish subjunctive, did some practice, then went back, took another past paper and went for it again. So by looking at where I had struggled and trying to improve that before doing the next one, I felt more confident going into it, knowing that I had practiced and more confident in knowing that I had done the work that would help me get a better score or specifically do better in one specific area. Um, I think this is really important because it can psychologically help you, which is a big part of doing well in a test, but it also literally helps you. Um, so yeah. As you may have gathered, not all the practice MLAT papers or the practice PAT papers, if you're doing physics, have answers online. Editing Arthur, it turns out that they do now all have um, answers. However, it is still really useful uh, to get teachers help on this. So the next point is still valid. Back to the video. Um, so what I suggest you do is for these past papers that don't have answers, um, and I do recommend you do more than one, more than two, more than three if they are there. I recommend doing as many as possible. Take the papers that you've done to your teacher, to your subject teacher, and ask them to mark it. So my poor Spanish and French teachers spent about two weeks uh, at the end of September, at the start of October, um, and actually the end of October, marking all this obscure grammar um, to help me do this. So really ask for help. Ask for your teacher's help. Ask them to teach you things again or teach you extra things because it goes beyond the A-level syllabus. So definitely ask for help from your teachers. They are, they will be more than willing to help and they are extremely useful in doing well in this. Okay, there we go. That's the end of this week's video. Quite a short one, um, but hopefully knowing some of the things I've told you, like it's not the be all and end all, you can do lots of practice and don't worry about it too much, will help you feel more confident going into your admissions test, whether it's the MLAT, whether it's the LAT, which is the that language aptitude test, whether it's the one for philosophy or whether it's the one for physics or medicine, whatever it might be, just know that if you do your best, you have a good chance of being asked to interview, you have a good chance of getting a place. So thank you very much for watching. Do like and subscribe and do put any comments you might have or questions you might have in the comment section below. I do answer them. Um, so thanks very much for watching. Stay tuned.